I could have gone back in and kind of played with lots of stuff and changed things, but I really felt like it was important to give people the beginnings in as, as true and as pure a form, but kind of, again, realize the new next-gen hardware right. to kind of get the most of that experience. Call of Duty Zombies Chronicles is one of the worst fucking games I've ever played, and that's saying a lot when you stop to consider how much I've actually played it. But there's no reason to play it really, it's the same baloney over and over again. I mean, I played some of these maps one, two, three, or even four times. Okay, maybe it's not the worst thing ever, but it's at least the most disappointing since fidget spinners. And I see a lot of similarities between the two things. For starters, fidget spinners ought to be a dead fad by the time this review is watched by anybody. And it's certainly possible that Zombies Chronicles may be dead soon enough as well. I mean, yeah, there's eight maps to play, but they're maps we've played before. I guess there's some improvements. Generally, the graphics and assets have been updated, and they've added some plants to the biodome, some cool lights and colors that flash in my eyes constantly. And also gobblegums, perks, and weapons to maps that were never designed with those things in mind. That's a recipe for success. Well, for the player's leaderboard entries, I guess. And all nine of you who watched my last review in full may be asking, weren't you involved in a violent shootout with the police? And truth be told, I was very fortunate to recover from my wounds after just a few months in a coma. Too bad they towed away my cab while I was gone. As soon as I had awoken from my coma, I immediately faced trouble with the feds, but again, I lucked out by getting an excellent court-appointed lawyer who made me an excellent plea deal. I agree with the family. I hope you die in prison as well. I only have to serve 20 months in prison retroactive to the date of my crime, um, alleged crime. I was pretty stoked about this until I realized there was a special stipulation in my plea deal with the feds. I'm legally binded to watch Zombies Chronicles gameplay every day for the next year. Jeez, that may be worse than the death penalty. When I heard about this, I almost considered pulling an Aaron Hernandez. <coughs> There's always one person who asks for my credentials for talking about zombies, and I always tell them you don't need to know how to eat a steak in order- Wait a second, how does that go again? Ah, screw it! I'll just show you my medallions and other collectibles. Over here we got multiple copies of Black Ops 1 to prove how much I've played the game. Over here we have my limited edition Black Ops Collector's Medal with Display Case. This is one of my most prized possessions. And how many people out there have an unopened RCXD car? Huh, I saw Relax and did an unboxing video so you can't say him. Oh jeez, is this used? In my original Zombies review from back in January of this year, I didn't really talk too much about the Gobblegums. Well, I'm glad I didn't, because now it seems more appropriate to talk about them than ever before. I'll also bring back one of my points from my original Zombies review about the zombie fatigue that we've experienced, and which we're gonna keep experiencing. After all, with the announcement of Nazi Zombies in the next Sledgehammer title, and the release of Zombies Chronicles, the tired act that is Zombies keeps continuing as predicted. There will be at least five straight COD titles that have a Zombies mode in it. I'll also talk about Jason Blundell and his exquisite revisionist history on both the pointless storyline and the gameplay of maps that were originally created by the recently disgraced Jimmy Zielinski. Heck, maybe I'll even throw in a few embarrassing clips of Zombies YouTubers for good measure. I'll also provide deep and insightful analysis of other stuff in the Zombies landscape. Oh yeah, I'll try my best not to repeat much stuff from the original Zombies review I did, but I'm sure you won't mind if I do, because if you bought Zombies Chronicles, you must love rehashes. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Number 1. Good Night Noct. Now, let's talk a bit about the abomination that is Nocturne and Toten. A lot of the post-millennials and even some of the popular YouTubers who pander to them were very upset that this map was getting another rendition in the Call of Duty franchise. As much as recycling stuff is lame as hell, the remastering of Noct almost seemed like a must. First of all, it hasn't quite been remastered four times like these guys claim. That Travesty in Transit doesn't count as Noct, and Revelations Noct doesn't really count either given that you're not limited to playing in a confined area. Nocturne's Hoden is the epitome of classic. On both the World of War and Black Ops 1 versions of this map, it was very difficult to survive for less experienced players, particularly in the co-op mode. It was a map that was so creepy, unique, and challenging that it made people fall in love with zombies to the point where they asked for more from Treyarch, and Treyarch delivered for many years. Nocturne Totem was so special because of the claustrophobic nature of the map and its legitimately scary and eerie atmosphere. Nact always has that kind of special place in our heart when we look at it because I think it really stands for 
uh, the Spirit of Treyarch. So no, no remastered map would be, or pack would be, would be full without, without an activator. Wow, Jason Blundell actually said something intelligent. Maybe he did actually keep Nocturne to its roots and deliver on his promise of keeping the maps faithful. Can you play the map? Oh. Don't get me wrong, perks and pack of punched weapons are nice, and I always wondered how the Noct would play out with these things included. But that's why we have custom zombie maps to toy around with this sort of experimental stuff. But to have an official Treyarch Nocturne tone that has a Wonder Fizz location and gobble gums, it's just horseshit. The other World of War maps don't have the Pack-a-Punch machine. Okay, that's good. But you can still Pack-a-Punch and get alternate ammo types with the use of various Gobblegums. They might as well just have added the Pack-a-Punch machine to these maps. Jeez, someone needs to provide Treyarch with some serious feedback on this shit. Oh yeah, on the subject of feedback, I'd like to take this time to thank you guys for the great positive feedback in my last couple reviews. User Nazir Hunter said, Shut the f*** up. Thanks for the insightful comment. I've also had a lot of comments where people asked if my wisdom teeth were recently pulled out, or something like that. Three people have asked me that, actually. I got those shits removed, like, back in 1972, or... Was it 73? I don't know. But just because I slur my speech sometimes, doesn't mean there's something wrong with me. So yeah, my response to you guys, in the wise words of Nazir Hunter, Shut the f*** up. Hey, why do I keep getting censored? Are we trying to pander to those post-millennials with this PG-13 review? Speaking of pandering, what's this crap with catering to noob players? Adding the Rega Mark II to every map, Gobblegums, Wonderjizz, the 3 hit system, and all this other stuff. I'm actually surprised the Mark II is in every map considering it first appeared in Buried, which is a Jimmy Z classic. He's probably pretty upset that his maps got remastered and that Jason Blundell is getting all the praise in the community. The only developer who may be more upset than Jimmy is probably Lee Ross. He's in the middle of his DLC season for Infinity Ward's Infinite Warfare Zombies and is getting completely overshadowed by the zombies powerhouse that is Treyarch. Those bullies. Lee Ross is also getting bullied by 12 year olds in the community who are talking shit on his game. And the inexperienced Lee keeps falling for debate. The only thing more embarrassing than this are the people who try to be Infinity Ward apologists and praise Ross's maps for being different and fun. The only thing that looks good about those Infinite Warfare maps are the celebrity guest stars that they manage to get for them, like David Hasselhoff, Pee Wee Herman, Kevin Smith, and Pam Greer. But come on, even Kevin Smith had to vomit when playing Raves in the Redwoods. Oh, excuse me. I feel, I feel like I'm at you, Hurl, so I don't want to throw up on you. I'll be back. Your character does that in-game. Number 2, Jason Blunder makes a zombies game. There's a lot of outcry in the community that Mob of the Dead wasn't getting a remaster in the map pack. Some swore that they wouldn't purchase it because of this exclusion. Treyarch probably had legitimate reason for not including it, like having licensing issues with the actors from the map. After all, Michael Madsen has a high pay rate these days. But apart from this possible reason, does there really need to be a remaster of a map from mid-2013? The same goes for Origins. It doesn't look significantly better than the Black Ops 2 counterpart to justify a remaster if you ask me. It almost looked like they ported it or something. I have no reason to care for a Mob of the Dead remaster anyways because I'm going to be stuck inside of a jail cell for the foreseeable future. I don't need no prison map. If anybody would like to get me out of jail later, it would be much appreciated. So yeah, the Mob of the Dead outcry is absurd. Oh no. A wrestling fan who also likes Black Ops 2? Cripes, that's like having testicular cancer and AIDS. Uh, why even bother reviewing Zombies Chronicles and watching the gameplay? You're not gonna like it in any case. It sort of reminds me when someone's laying in their bed, trying to go to sleep, and they pass some gas under their bed sheets. They sure as hell know that if they poke their head inside the bed sheets, it's gonna smell pretty terrible. But they usually do it anyway, just cause they're curious as to how bad it is. It's very much like the reason why I watched Zombies Chronicles gameplay. I knew it was going to be terrible, but I was kind of curious to how bad it actually was. You might be asking, just how incompetent can Treyarch be when it comes to making creative choices? Mm -hmm. You know, one that, that uh, people might raise their eyebrow about was uh, Nax, for example. Yeah. Like totem. Uh, by a lot of hardcore guys' standards, they would say that's a very easy map, a mm. very kind of straightforward map. Mm. But it's a map that, if you've not played zombies before, is a lot more approachable. Mm. The hardcore yeah. guys have all been trained on these real mad crazy ones now. Right. But we also want a, a pack that, if you're new to zombies or you've seen your friends playing it, there's just a little bit of a kind of a smoother curve to come in. 
Get real. You have that totally backwards, my friend. The fact that it's such a simplistic barebones map is what makes it difficult compared to the other larger maps where you have more resources available at your disposal. Hey, what are we doing with lighting? Are we now emphasizing the window and then, you know, if we put the, the window orange and the corridor blue, you'll go for that because humans naturally go for oranges over blues. That's so crazy. And then, what are you talking about, Jason? People play these maps before and you're investing your time into putting different lights to trick players into going into a dead end or something? Oh, forbid that happens, they have no means of escape. Not like you have various gobblegums, perks, weapons, wonder weapons, or traps to bail you out. So yeah, going back to their creative choices. Who thought it was a good idea to add gobblegums to first rooms? And why is there a gobblegum machine on no man's land of all places? We don't set up with first room challenges in mind, okay. uh, but we think about it in a um, gameplay uh, presentation way. Oh, that explains it. Number three. Marketing, false narratives, and fatigue. A lot of people seem to complain that they have to pay $30 for a DLC pack, or that they're not getting it for free despite them being season pass owners. That's actually why they're not marketing it as a DLC 5, because they don't want any bad PR for not giving it away for free to those who have been loyal to the franchise and invested in it. I mean really, season pass owners were taking a big risk when they originally bought it. No one informed them that they would be paying top dollar to water plants. But if you were to read the fine print, you would see that the Season Pass only promises 4 DLC packs. And anyways, it only comes out to like, less than $4 per map. It's a great deal! Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, it doesn't really bother me. Spend the money how you want. At least we can be grateful that we're getting 8 new maps with the pack. Uh, what? Anyways, the expansion pack was rumored to have originally been titled Zombies Compilation, instead of Zombies Chronicles. Very odd choice if you ask me. But apparently the name itself wasn't quite the reason they scrapped it. Activision figured that by using the word Chronicles instead of Compilation, they would save about 790 bucks annually when printing t-shirts and other merchandise since Chronicles has one less letter in it. Those cheap bastards. In any case, the marketing that I want to talk about was how Jason Blundell has been advertising the maps as being faithful to the original while also introducing new aspects and gameplay features. This is what they call having your gobblegum and eating it too. Because with this clever marketing ploy, Blundell is basically appealing to those who just want to revisit the nostalgia file, while also silencing critics who might say we're just getting the same thing over and over again with these remasters. They've also been marketing it as an opportunity for newcomers to catch up with the storyline, even though the easter eggs on these maps are essentially the same shit that people did nearly a decade ago. I guess Treyarch would tell you that a lot of their fans came around Black Ops 2 or even Black Ops 3 and that they didn't get to really experience a lot of the storyline concepts from back in the day. A lot of our fans had kind of come in later, come in at like Black Ops 2 or even Black Ops 3. And so those kind of early storyline kind of concepts, those early maps that really kind of set down the foundation for zombies, right. a lot of people hadn't experienced them. Alright, I just said that. Might as well market Black Ops 1 to them. They could get it for cheaper and it's better too. And whatever new, minor easter eggs that were added does not justify the remastering of the maps and purchase of them. And it also constitutes as a prime example of the old revisionist history which Blundell seems to indulge in. It's what he did to Jimmy Zelensky's transit characters when he created the Zombies comic book. And it's what he's doing also to these old maps which Jimmy made as well. Now, I know there was kind of stuff out there like, Oh, Blundell's rewriting it! You know? Yeah. Uh, that's not the case, that is needed. You know, that was one of the decisions gotcha. not to kind of fiddle around with it in that way, because there is a relevance if you look at the story and you could, you could have played around with it. <laughs> Acknowledging the criticism doesn't pardon you from anything. I mean, I don't really care about the story getting all messed up, because no one knows what the hell is going on anyway. Oh look, there's a new explanation. So, some of you may think that I'm one of those people who say Blundell ruined my childhood. No, now that's just silly talk. Blundell didn't ruin my childhood. My spine scoliosis did. My job is not to troll people. Yeah. My job is to try and kind of make stories, make narratives, gameplay that um, engage people. I don't really know what he was trying to say, but I imagine it's a lie. Oh jeez, Christopher Walken is here. Can I have your autograph, sir? There are 17 pantomimes that give away that Blundell's lying. Jimmy Z had 20, Jason Blundell has 17 pantomimes. And if you know these pantomimes, like, you know, the back of your hand, they beat lie detectors all the hell now. What we got here is a little case of show and tell, and Blundell doesn't want to show us nothing, but he's telling us everything. Anywho, we have zombies and at least five straight Call of Duty titles, and a Zombies Chronicles expansion pack to boot. Oh great, this again! 
Seriously though, can you guys create the next Nazi Zombies type game mode that catches on with the community? If you don't, people are just gonna look back years from now and say, where did they go wrong with zombies? Well, I'm telling you right here, right now, that they overexposed this game mode. They tripped their hand once too many times. They put all their eggs in one basket. Whatever the hell you want to call it, they sure did it. Number four, he ceased. First year, or he ceased fast. So they recently released some timeline that's supposed to patch up all the plot holes and baloney, but it just looks like more mumbo jumbo revisionist horseshit to me. Why does all this endless text and super crap? I need my damn magnifying glass to read this shit. Temporal rifts teleport Arthur to resolution 1295 and 20. Jessica kills the photographer and secures the incriminating photographs. Primus instructs the Wolf King to begin building the rise and draw. How embarrassing. It's time to once again talk about the paradigm shift trackers taken to the core of their game, where they focus on the easter egg stories and overall lore, rather than the gameplay mechanics. After all, we are playing a game, aren't we? We're not too far removed from having cutscenes in the middle of our gameplay. Maybe Sledgehammer will take care of this issue. Not that cutscenes and focus on storyline are bad, but that's what the campaign is for. And other games can excel as narrative-driven games. But that doesn't fit well with the Zombies game mode and formula. Because, well, the central mechanics of the game weren't designed with that in mind. Trying to make some epic storyline for a basic survival game is like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. Maybe because the gameplay is so simple and repetitive that fans and the creators of the game felt that they had to push a story and easter egg angle just to keep the game alive? Confirmed. I don't know, it's really weird when you think about it. There's an alarming difference between the easter egg cutscenes and zombies and the gameplay during the rounds. They feel like two totally separate entities. Going back to my point about story-driven games like The Last of Us, you got your cutscenes and character building dialogue, but when it reverts back to the gameplay, you feel like the story element is still there. And that's good because it means the story was compelling enough to invest you into what you're doing. You're immersed into the world that you're set in, and you will by all means protect that little girl from the apocalypse. Starting to sound like some other game all of a sudden. Whereas in Zombies, you have an opening cutscene and a random map, and then you proceed to play hours and hours of gameplay that is unrelated to the cutscene. I guess some of the easter eggs in dialogue, especially in more recent Zombies titles, will try to explain things a little bit through the voiceover. But you don't have to even do the easter eggs. There's no reason to care about the story when playing the rounds, and there's no reason to care about the rounds if you're in it for the story. Instead of being separated, they should go hand in hand, like peanut butter and jelly, or roasted almonds and chocolate ribbons. Oh no, speaking of that, I need to load up on some Jamocha almond fudge ice cream at the local supermarket. Oh, oh no, where's the, where's the Jamoka I'm a, where's the Jamoka I'm a, oh, how am I gonna survive? Oh, does anyone know where Jamoka I'm a fudge is? I'm sure Jason loves making stupid crap for the fans to eat up like ice cream. This is so amazing. This uh, is so fun. I'm such a fraud. Uh, wait, wait. Oh, please. Well, <laughs> this pandering to storyline nutjobs is getting a little ridiculous if you ask me. Oh no. Who are these kids? The only thing more embarrassing than this is David Carradine. <laughs> The story is the coolest, most intricate thing since Stranger Things. Remember the 80s? Um, when is Shreyer going to expand their target audience and accommodate girls in the 12 to 17 year old demographic? Maybe have Samantha drink one of those unicorn frappuccinos. <laughs> hey, what's going on? What's... What's everyone laughing at? Stop! Number 5. Let's talk about some of the maps. What this is, is oh. the full zombie timeline. What? Oh my god. So this basically what? tracks. No. No, not the stupid timeline again. I'm here to talk about the maps from a gameplay perspective. Oh, look at that. They brought back the Galil and M16. That's awfully considerate of them. Ah, uh, Mr. Rodzine. Those guns were actually recreated months ago and released as supply drop exclusives for multiplayer, so they didn't really create them for the zombies map. Shut up, you useless jackass! I guess I'll have to wait for the commando to be available here in a few months via the supply drops. There's been a lot of outcry over the replacement of swastikas with other Nazi symbols on maps like Kino der Toten. Ah, uh, Mr. Rodzin, Nazi zombies are politically incorrect. Yeah, yeah, I know, you told me last time. I was gonna say that people need to get over themselves and allow Activision to maximize their profits in the German market. The real travesty is Treyarch's decision to remove the black and white feature from Ascension when the power is off. I guess black and white is a bad choice and annoying. I find it to be a bad choice because it will be annoying. I'd rather just have it always have the normal color. 
I must say, I really like a few of the creative choices that Treyarch made though. Some of the small things. Gotta push it in, ready to push it in. It's kinda of small, dude. It's not small, what are you talking about? No, no, not that kind of small. Small stuff like how one of the escape routes on the stage area of Keen Under Toten is a lot more narrow, making it slightly more challenging for novice players who might be inclined to run their strategy. Stuff like that is actually pretty smart on their end. So smart, in fact, that I doubt Jason Blundell had anything to do with it. Oh gosh, one day they're gonna find out that I'm a fraud and I'll get kicked out. Something I really hate about Zombies Chronicles is the lighting of the interiors on most of these maps. Does anyone have a damn flashlight I could use? If there's not maps full of colors, music, light, and euphoria flashing in your eyes, then you have the other extreme end of the spectrum, where everything is so dark and gritty. Where's the middle ground? Look at it! This area alone looks beautiful. Very dark, very gritty, just absolutely incredible. Sheena Numa actually looks pretty nice, and I guess the new colorful assets for maps like Moon are cool too. But it's kind of like Treyarch is just shining flashy things in front of us and trying to justify paying for these maps again because of the pretty colors. Shangri-La is a pretty good looking map too, I guess. So you do your YouTube thing and I'll, I'll be back in a second. You're supposed to be entertaining, people are watching this video. A zombie YouTuber being entertaining? That'll be the day, that'll be the day. Hmm. Rubber gloves. Relaxing and confirmed? Uh, I'm getting a little tired, so I'm gonna hand it over to my good friend Easter Egg Joe. I know he loves a lot of things about Zombies Chronicles. Take it away, Joey! Here's my top five things I totally love about Zombies Chronicles. Number one, we got the Ray Gun Mark II. I must admit, I'm a mark for Mark II. But hey, who is it? Am I right? <laughs> Number two, we have the 8 Days of the Undead event for Black Ops 3, with tons of great daily prizes and free giveaways. Treyarch stopped doing it after just a couple days, but oh wells, at least they tried. Clocking in at number 3, we got Takio's epic hat. They reintroduced an interesting layer to his character arc, so I'm really glad Treyarch has given the fans what we want. Speaking of attire, where is Richtofen's space outfit in Ascension? Oh well, I applaud Trainer for being different. Got the music. Okay, that'll be enough for today, Joe. You ain't gonna stop me this time, man. Clacking in at number six. The game is broken, lame, and repetitive. But what did you expect, asshole? It's sad that the game is pretty much maxed out. People got round 100 plus on the first day and round 200 plus in the first week. I guess that's just a sign of the times, as they say. It's bound to happen when they keep making the same thing over and over again. Except it only gets easier as the years progress. Maybe Sledgehammer's new Nazi Zombies game mode in Call of Duty World War II will put a new twist on the experience that's much needed. I mean, the premise sounds great. As a last resort in World War II, the Third Reich creates Nazi Zombies. I even heard that it'll be like a campaign of sorts, that you can play through rather than having rounds. There was even a rumor about it being possibly a third person shooter. And also there's a really good and creepy teaser image of the Nazi zombie with a helmet who looks totally badass. But enough about Zombie Army Trilogy. One of my major criticisms of Zombies Chronicles is the Black Ops 3 engine itself. I don't really know how to explain it. It goes beyond the sliding and 3 hit system. Just the way the character moves and the AI movement system as well and how they attack the player. It's just really odd. Not saying that this makes the game more difficult, because it's far from the truth. But it just makes the gameplay shittier. Black Ops 1 and even Black Ops 2 had a pretty good player mechanics, and to take those maps and place them in the Black Ops 3 engine just feels out of place, and some of the value of the maps drop as a result. So yeah, high round strategies, if they could even be cold strategies nowadays, are utilized by so many people that the novelty of getting high rounds and feeling some sense of accomplishment for doing so have totally worn off. But um, there's more strategy than ever because you have to play fast and that distinguishes the great players from the kinda great players. Um, maybe, but the fact that the game has devolved into a speedrunning exercise because it's so easy to play and everything is essentially maxed out serves as sufficient commentary on the current state of the game. On the topic of speedrunning, I don't quite understand the fascination of it by certain video game communities. It's like the zombies community really got bored with the game, browsed twitch.tv during 2013 and 2014 when the site was on the rise, and they saw certain streamers speedrun some games that they enjoyed as children. And they said, hey, I want to do this with the game that I play nowadays. And not that these older games were designed by their developers with speedrunning in mind, though I'm sure some of these new games are considering that the gaming studios are more conscious of it. But at least some of those games that have speedrunning categories make sense to have them. 
There's often a conclusive nature to those games, whereas Zombies just has an arbitrary speedrunning category like Round 50, 100, etc. And obviously there's luck involved with all sorts of speedrunning stuff, but with things like dog rounds which fluctuate in the rounds they appear, it's even more apparent that this is not a game suited for speedrunning. Get over yourselves, not every game needs to show up on Summer Games done quick. Pipe? I would really prefer if you would be quiet. The only thing more absurd than zombie speedruns are those bearskin hats. I mean seriously, how the hell are you supposed to see with that on? No wonder we got our ass kicked back in Vietnam. Uh, Mr. Rodstein, you burned your draft card back in Vietnam. Um, by the way, are there any new glitches or old glitches that have returned? I guess that route skip glitch is back on Moon. Does Triarch have their head up their ass or something? I guess the logical alternative is that the second generation of high round players back in the community in 2011 were correct when they said Treyarch implemented the glitch on purpose, because the rounds were too long or something like that. Oh wells! I also see Treyarch address my criticism about the astronaut zombie causing lots of problems due to his ridiculous health. Now you could just quickly drop his ass with an alternate ammo type. Hooray! On another note, can people stop claiming world records on completely ridiculous things that have so many qualifiers attached to them? As if the recent trend of no revive records wasn't bad enough. You have people claiming world records for getting two stabs on Origins in the first round of the game. Little do people know, I have numerous records myself. Including, but not limited to, most rebuilds per minute, 9.8, minimum 30 rounds. Most urine displaced during one round, 53 ounces. Most weight lost during one round, 3 pounds. It was a high octane round. Most controllers broken during one game, 3. Maximum 35 rounds. Most world records broken during one game. Five, I think. Oh, I have an incoming Skype call. It's that Snake Cupid Derek again. Uh, let's see what he has to say. Mr. Rothstein, I don't appreciate your ruse. Can you say something nice for once in your life, you miserable old hack? You listen to me, Snake. While I will admit to a certain cynicism, the fact is that I'm a naysayer and hatchet man in the fight against cheating. I pride myself in playing legitimately, and I'll gladly continue to do so, because I choose to live my life in the company of Relaxin End and C4Z. My concerns are global. I reject absolutely glitching, modding, and cheap strategies. The foundation of such a method is love. Or was it drugs? I don't know, but I love you, QP Snake. Number 7. Um, Gobblegums? There's a bunch of stupid gobblegums on this game, ranging from perkaholic and shopping free, which set you up with all your weapons, perks, and doors being open within the first couple rounds of the game. Then there's more extreme stuff, like round robin, which skips an entire round. The highest round you could get to in Black Ops 3 Zombies is round 255. And people could get there in a four player match in less than three hours with the use of these many gobblegums. Um, okay. Seems legit. And with the recent release of Zombies Chronicles, also came a new gobblegum called Power Vacuum which gives you drops for every six zombies that you kill. And it lasts for a total of four entire rounds. For those of you who might not know, the term power vacuum is defined as a condition that exists when someone has lost control of something. This applies almost perfectly to the state of affairs over at Treyarch. How do things like the power vacuum or round robin gobblegum get by the QA testers anyways? Maybe if they barely worked on the stuff, but apparently former QA testers say that they were required to work a lot of overtime. But don't worry, at least their snack kitchens are well stocked. Oh, these cons over here explain it. Treyarch might actually think that players need to grind the maps really hard to earn Liquid Divinium. And that if they get those rare gobblegums, they deserve to use them. But they probably don't realize that quitting the game application before game overing saves any of the gobblegums that you used in that game. Or that there's other strategies and exploits to attain Liquid Divinium at an alarming rate. Or even the fact that you could just spend a bunch of your money to buy Liquid Divinium with Call of Duty points. Maybe they are aware of how overpowered the stuff is, but they choose to leave it in anyways because they know it will result in more purchases of COD points. Speaking of Call of Duty points and Liquid Divinium, my good friend Mato Master is going to give a spin in Dr. Monty's factory and try to get some overpowered gobblegums. Alright, the floor is all yours, Mato. Hey guys, Mato Master here, and a lot of you may be asking why I don't play No Man's Land or First From Challenge anymore. I don't play much zombies anymore, I'm more of a big casino man. It's very easy to win big jackpot in Slovakia. Some of my friends call me Mr. Jackpots. My good friend Lori, some of you may know as Relax Ninja, she taught me a good strategy for winning big money. So let me put on my suit real quick and then we'll utilize strategy for Dr. Monty Factory. I just purchased some cut points for Liquid Divinium, so let's see if we could get some good gobblegum. 
Hello. Oh yes, oh yes, Mr. Jigpot strikes again. Oh yes, double perkaholic for the win. Thank you very much, Mado. So now there's even more gray area in the game than ever before. Which gobblegums do you ban from using in official world record games? Who knows? And not that you need all the OP gobblegums. I mean, just look at this guy. He gets the max round 255 without Juggernog. Hmm. I hope we never find it the perfect formula. I, I hope we that's, never that's do. That's a cool statement. I hope we never like do. Because if we did, I'd, uh, I'd probably stop doing it. One could only hope that he finds out that perfect formula very soon. So yeah, these guys completed round 40 very quickly thanks to the use of the new Gobblegum Power Vacuum. In fact, let's examine just how quickly this round actually takes. Let me take out my stupid stopwatch. In the meantime, I'm gonna turn off my microphone for a bit while I time this round. Alright, begin! Oh good, now I can take a break from doing this review for all these ungrateful assholes on the internet. Alright, let's get some shit done. I gotta make a phone call. Oh jeez, I gotta take a leak so badly that my back teeth are floating. Hello, welcome to Activision Support. My name is Johnny Twilly, and I will be assisting you today. How may I help you? Yeah, yeah, I'd like to find out the status of an order that I placed for you guys a couple weeks ago on your COD merchandise website. Can you give me your name, sir? The name's Ace Rothstein, customer number 200228. Let me pull this order up for you really quickly. Um, okay, sir, what was that order for? It was for my Transit Mega Blocks construction set, item number 192256. Okay, my computer is displaying that item as shipped and received. Are you sure you didn't receive it, sir? Mmm, I'll have to look around. The other day I was playing Transit on the Xbox, but that's the only memory of Transit I've had recently. Maybe you mistook playing with the Mega Blocks for playing with the map online? Yeah, they're both so damn boring, so I guess that's possible. I guess anything is possible with Trump in the White House. Okay, let's confirm some of these other items that you recently purchased. We have two dozen Brutus Pop figures, a Rave in the Redwoods puzzle, a Quick Revive heat-sensitive mug, and a Modern Warfare New Era flat-brim snapback cap. Is that all? You forgot the 2017 World League Championship jersey. Double XL. When can I expect to receive these items anyways? About five days. Five business days, that is. Thanks for reaching out to us, Mr. Rothstein. I hope I was able to answer any questions or concerns you may have had. Now, did you have any further questions? Oh, it's time to turn my microphone back on. Looks like the round's almost over. Oh, jeez Louise, only two minutes? That was a quick round if I ever seen one. You know what? I take back everything I said about Blundell. Jason Blundell, I present you with a totally and completely understand Zombies Award. You've earned it, my friend. You've earned it. Number 8. Conclusion In conclusion, Zombies Chronicles is, well, just whatever, man. If you like zombies, you like zombies, I guess. I'm not here to tell you to buy the maps or not to buy them. To be frank with you, I don't really give a shit. Funny thing is, I used to really enjoy zombies when I was a younger, more youthful kid. You know, before I had tired feet syndrome. Anyways, it used to be tons of fun. Keeping up with a small community of players and seeing who was getting far on a certain map. It was a different time. A select few people had recording devices, social media like Twitter wasn't a popular forum for no-life recluses that played the game, and Twitch TV didn't even exist. On the Xbox console, people used their mottos and bios, yeah, remember those, to communicate things about themselves, whether it was their current round in the game they were playing, or just a list of their high rounds on a few maps that existed back then. If you include remasters of previous maps, there were 15 maps that existed from 2008 into the release of Black Ops 2 in November 2012. Since then, there have been 31 more maps, and a couple spin-off game modes as well. I mean, it's cool that a bonus game mode that you're passionate about becomes something much more. But it becomes problematic when it becomes too big for itself. It had to cater to the needs of a newer mass audience. I always thought that a problem with the recent Zombies maps was the map design and geo creation. And while I still think that's true to a large extent, the recent release of Zombies Chronicles proves that the issue goes much deeper. With these remasters, the geometry of the maps are largely unchanged. But what distinguishes it from its predecessors is the meat and potatoes of the maps. AKA the features such as gobblegums, the weapons, perks, and AI system. This is all the surface level stuff that anyone could really notice. And then beneath the layer, there's something rotten to the core about the mode. 
And that rottenness and corruptness is the tired act of fatigue that surrounds a game mode that Activision keeps shoving in our faces. And it's kind of upsetting that gaming studios like Infinity Ward and Sledgehammer may not be making a zombies mode out of passion, and that their creative ideas may not be flowing naturally, but rather they make the mode out of orders from higher ups at Activision. Because zombies has been determined to be more profitable than Special Ops, Extinction, and some other mode which has yet to be tested and is too risky for the corporation to undertake. I guess Zombies Chronicles is a long time coming. It's nice for Treyarch to re-release maps that the community loved. Heck, I remember being super excited when I heard they were remastering just one map, the Giant. Then, of course, I played it. It's not so much about having a faithful recreation either. We don't need the same stuff over and over again, especially with the mode that's getting old. But the shit in Zombies Chronicles and Black Ops 3 ain't gonna cut it either. I was gonna say that I hope Treyarch steps up their game for their next title, but there's no point in being optimistic about it anymore. Realistic expectations are needed. It's very much like fidget spinners. Zombies was a fad that peaked years ago. The days of kids at the lunch table talking about how they got the ray gun from the box and got a new high round are over. It's all over. It's game over, man. It's game over. We're on an express elevator to hell. Well, I guess this is the last you'll hear from me for a while. I'm going to be behind bars for quite some time. I'm sort of feeling depressive with all the zombies talk. So I'm going to sing a song, then go to sleep. Adios, shit heels. I'm singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. What a glorious feeling, I'm happy again. I'm blo- <coughs> 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 <coughs>